You know, if you're like most people, and I mean most people, what you're going to watch in this video and what you're going to hear is going to resonate very deeply with you. Now, when I started and I said, if you're like most people, you've got bad habits that you want to break. There's something going on in your life, whether you're eating too much sugar, eating junk food, you're gambling, you're drinking too much, you're always late, whatever it might be, you've got bad habits and you want to break your bad habits. This is a place that I see most people having a significant challenge in their life. And what many people try to do is they try to break their bad habits and very quickly they're right back to their, you know, to their old habits. Let me share with you why that happens. See, and we all talk about habits. You hear all the motivational speakers talking about habits and you hear habits everywhere. But people know very little about habits and how they're formed in the brain and how the brain maintains habits. So here's, I wanna give you a very quick lesson here on the three major parts of the brain. I'm gonna keep this really simple. The three major part of the parts of the brain are the prefrontal cortex, the thinking part of the brain, the mammalian brain, which is the limbic system, which is the middle part of the brain, and then the oldest part of the brain, which is what we call the reptilian part of the brain. Your habits are housed in the reptilian part of the brain, and it's the responsibility of that part of the brain to actually maintain your habits. Now, the reason we maintain habits is to conserve energy. I mean, let's you know, give, you, give you an example here. Could you imagine how difficult your life would be if every time you got in the car, you had to actually learn how to drive a car again? No, I mean, that's, that, that's ridiculous. So the brain creates habits to conserve energy. But here's the thing, whatever habits you learn, now here's the kicker for a lot of people, and pay attention to this, is every habit you have, even if you call it a negative habit, like, like let's say for example, smoking cigarettes, every habit you have the reptilian part of the brain. Now, when I use the word thinks, think, I'm also gonna say that the reptilian part of the brain operates from this. Every habit you have is needed for your survival. Because see, the reptilian part of the brain is responsible for your survival. So it works from and it operates from every habit you have is needed for your survival. Now, consider that for a moment. You might be thinking, well, you know what? Cigarette smoking is, is not good for me. But you know what? That's prefrontal cortex, that's thinking part of the brain. Whereas the oldest part of your brain, it doesn't actually think about bad or good. It just says, you know what? You smoke, you drink Diet Coke, you do whatever you do. That is a habit. Therefore, I'm going to maintain that habit because that habit is a survival mechanism. So, the reason that it's so darn hard for people to break their habits, their bad habits, is because they're working against the way that the reptilian part of the brain works. Because what happens, big word I know, the prefrontal cortex, the thinking part of the brain, the thinking part of the brain says, you know what, no more cigarettes. But the reptilian part of the brain says, no, cigarettes, that's a habit, that's a survival uh, mechanism, a survival strategy, we need that survival strategy. Then what happens is we set the brain up for what I call a brain battle. The thinking part of the brain says, no more cigarettes. The reptilian part of the brain says, no, cigarettes. Now we've got a brain battle. And let me ask you, what happens in your own life? What, you, what happens for most people is now becomes a real battle of have the cigarette, don't have the cigarette, have the cigarette, don't have the cigarette, and then what ultimately happens is you have the cigarette. Why? Because the reptilian survival part of the brain is stronger than the thinking part of the brain. You know, what I've noticed in most people is most people are what I call a wandering seeker. And what I mean by that is they're seeking, they're seeking solutions to change their habits. They're going to programs and seminars, as you might have heard me mention before, and they're always looking for ways to create new habits, new empowering habits, new ways to be in life. But the reality is, me doing this for a living and teaching this, there are very few resources out there teaching people, because like I said earlier, you, you hear people talking about habits, but rarely do you see anybody teaching people from a brain-based level how to change their habits. So people are, are literally run, running around and they're wandering around and seeking ways to create new habits. That being said, let me share something with you here. One of the biggest mistakes that most people make, and I've been there myself, is that we, um, we personalize our habits. And let me share with you what I mean by that. Personalizing a habit is, let's say for example, that you, you wanna stop drinking Diet Coke. So what you do is you go through this whole scenario, you know, the, the, trying to change the way you think about it and everything else. 
And then you notice very quickly you're right back to your old behavior again. Well, the reason why, again, is the brain, but then what we do, we personalize the habit, because see, habits are just habits. They simply come from the brain. They're neurological, they're biological, they're, they're chemical. But then what we do is we say, see, I told you, I just, I'm, I'm not strong enough, I can't do this, I have no willpower, I just have no self-discipline, and we personalize the habit, but the habit simply comes from the brain. It has nothing to do with you or what you think about you. Now, to make it even more challenging, we have what's called a habit voice. And when I tell you what this is, you're gonna recognize it. The habit voice is that little voice that sits on your shoulder. And you analytically, prefrontal cortex, you say, you know what, no more Diet Coke. But that habit voice is like a little voice sitting right here on your shoulder and it's like, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, have the Diet Coke. And that habit voice actually is like a terrorist because that habit voice comes from the reptilian part of the brain, the oldest part of the brain. And the habit voice is actually what prompts us into going back into the old behavior again. This is why it is so vital that you become what I call a conscious transformer. And the reason why is, see, even when I use the word conscious, we operate brain-based unconsciously, and we don't even know we're doing it. That's why, for example, people who bite their nails, you know, they don't say, well, it's 3 p.m., it's time to bite my nails today. It happens unconsciously. And what we want to do is we, because we want to become more powerful and we want more in life, we want to become conscious of the way that we think and the way that we transform our thinking and the way that we use our brain to create everything that we want to create in life. Now, obviously, I can't cover everything in this short video. We've touched on some things, and I want to go deeper with you. So what I'm asking you to do is click the link, go to my podcast, and we're going to dig a lot deeper into this topic.